Weihera Lager. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Boys Reviews. I've got one here today and it is from the, I think it's Vihera, I mean that's what they're called, and it is their Lager. Now, this is a bit confusing, this one. I looked on their website and they looked like a craft brewer, a quite, quite a new craft brewer. They made a big thing about the awards that they'd won, recent awards and they are also the recipient of an award for their environmental credentials, which they've been um, given, a, I think it's called a solar award, which has been given from the EU. And that means the brewery is, I wouldn't say carbon neutral, but very environmentally friendly. They use a lot of solar power, very eco-friendly, low carbon footprint, etc., etc. And that seems to be the trend now. You know, if you're going to save the planet, then why not start with beer? Because let's face it, no other fucker's going to start, are they? Look at India and China, what they're pumping out, all the shit. Especially China, fuck, you know. I was looking the other day, the life expectancy of a miner, I don't mean a kid, I mean a coal miner, in uh, certain regions in China is about two weeks. It's that fucking dangerous. Crazy. Absolute mentalness. Anyway. Uh, this is a lager. It has come from the, the Bamberg region of Bavaria, specifically in a place called Veret Trunstadt, which is sort of northwest of Bamberg, just up from, well, Bamberg is sort of north of Nuremberg, if you, if you want to be exact about location. And what really surprised me about this brewery is they've been, they were founded in 1874. Now, looking at the website, looking at the beers that they do, etc. They look quite new. They've, they've got a very modern sort of outlook. And if you look on here, it, it's, you know, they've won craft beer awards. They've got, see look, there's the, there's the awards on the back. That's the solar one. See, this is when Autofocus starts deciding that it's gonna go on fucking strike. There's the solar awards. There's, they won an award in 2021 and it's only February. So they must be doing something right. I think that's a, is that a bronze award? Yeah, well beer, bronze award. And they won but World Beer Gold Awards as well. But that's you know that's just for this beer. All their other beers have won awards as well. And it looks quite quite promising. And this beer has a sell by date of 2021, uh, April. It's now February. So really I should get this drunk. But what uh, this has been sat in my fridge for a while. And what's put me off is I think the label looks cheap. Now, me being my shallow materialistic self looked at that label and really wasn't impressed by it. There's nothing really traditional about that. It looks, I don't know, almost like a comical style of beer. But it's these sort of beers that I ignore for ages and they really surprise me. So I'm hoping this is gonna be one of them beers. And judging by the awards, the signs could possibly look good. Let's check it out. Let's see what's going on with it. Okie dokie, it's 4.7%, 500 ml bottle. It is a beer from Bamberg in Bavaria. Ingredients, water, malted barley, hops, and of course yeast as well, they never mentioned that in the Reinheitsgebot. And I've mentioned this before about the Reinheitsgebot, and as it's a big thing in Bavaria and all that, and you know, a lot of beers use that as part of their identity. You know, they say no, beer brewed according to the German purity law. That's not a guarantee of good beer. And if you see that, and I have as well in the past, I'm guilty of this, I make no bones about it, I hold my hands up. I was sort of taken in by that marketing as well. But when you sort of think about it, the, they're very loose, these 
Ryan Heitzkebot laws. And they've been superseded as well. And I think it was in 1992, I think it was superseded, that they allowed certain other ingredients as well. Especially for export beer. Export beer that comes from Bavaria. They could put, you know, glucose syrup and more or less anything they wanted to. So, you know, that's a bit... It's a bit sneaky, you know, especially from Bavaria. But I, mean, I know Paulana have done it, and I really want to get hold of some of that Paulana beer to try it, to see what it's like, because I've tasted the Paulana that comes from Germany. It's the definite article from Germany. I want to see what they've done. And it's not an export stuff. This was actually from Germany. The pub that uh, is down the road, they get it in specially from Germany. And I don't mean it's the export stuff. I mean, they actually go to Germany and bring it back with them and it's just a couple of barrels and you know I don't know how they get away with it but they do and well they did po uh, pre-Brexit I don't know how that's going to work now but yeah they did and it, and it tasted great but it wasn't I didn't notice it being very sweet this is on keg though so maybe that could be different from the bottle anyway I'm going way off topic here let's get this bottle opened up and see what's going on Right, there is, yeah, Alstem Bamberger Land, as it says on the cap there. It's oh, autofocus, you are such a twat. There you go. Right, let's get it into the glass. Uh, no brew sheet on this, nothing on the website on this. It's, it looks like quite a small brewery, actually, because they've got, you know, they're advertising booking rooms in there guest house and stuff like that so it's one of them small type of breweries that you know you can go it's like the Hofbrau house where they they also as well as the beers they advertise rooms I should take the muffin net off or when all this Covid bollocks is over get over to Germany me and the missus ain't had a honeymoon yet so my mission is to try and convince them I'm getting a studio built out of the back so there won't be fucking money for anything what's what we're getting on the nose wow that is sweet Sweet creamy malt, almost like a cream soda, if you can imagine that type of creaminess. Wow, it's like a almost like an ice cream sweetness. Mmm. I don't know whether that's an alarm bell or not. It certainly looks the part. Lots of carbonation. Quite a big head on that. But That really is sweet. Mm. I thought, what nasties have they put in this, potentially? That is a really white head on that. That's one of the whitest heads I have seen on a beer in a long time. Usually they're a little bit off white. That is brilliant white. Almost like a, a cream soda. It's a little bit of lemon citrus coming through there now. Not a lot. Mm. And they've called this a lager, not a hellas. It is a lager. I wonder if that's done for the export market. Who knows? Let's get it down the hatch. Prost, as they say in Germany. Wow, that is light. The body on that is very light, very drinkable. So I'm gonna go. Mm, that is really nice. That is a good one. There is big multi sweetness on this, but it's not like a an artificial type sweetness. It's very light. Now normally when you get that, that, I won't say glucose, but yeah, I will, I will say glucose. The body is a little bit heavy. And I've just drank some of that, or just reviewed some of the uh, Cine, I think it's called. The Belgian Brune, which had glucose in it, and that got a fucking 2 out of 10, I think. It was rubbish. I didn't like that. But this is nice. It's very light. And it's... It's not got an overpowering sweetness on it. Mm. 
I have to say the mouthfeel is superb. That is so light and refreshing. It's really good. And it's got a very, almost like an organic, malty taste to it. It's really clean tasting, if you know what I mean. And it's really good, I have to say. And I can see why it's won all these awards. Because that is a really nice one. Super light. Super light bodied, very refreshing. Um, yeah, 2021 Craft Beer Award. This is superb. Yeah, I am liking this. That's really good, really good. Now this is the sort of beer that you would, dis you would not discover over in this country, if you know what I mean. This does come across as a very, how can I put it, an artisanal type of beer. A well-kept secret, if you like, because that, I imagine, is brewed on a small scale. And you can tell because it's not got any of the traits of a of one of the bigger breweries from, from say Munich. It's what well, it's slight, very slightly lacking in flavor. Now, I was watching a certain beer review the other night and they were talking about German lagers and he said they're much of a muchness really. And I just thought you really fucking don't know what you're talking about if you say all oh, German lager is much of a muchness. This is what annoys me about a lot of beer reviews. And I don't, I'm not gonna name names, but he was saying, he basically said, oh, all these beers are much of a muchness, really. And then I, I, I lost a bit of respect for him for that. And I just thought that really isn't true because I've tasted some really bad German beers and I've tasted some fa fantastic German beers. And when I say German beers, I mean, I am talking about lagers or helices. So that's, that's what I want to get across. And to say that, I just think, well, that is so ill-informed. And to be fair, all he really reviews is craft beer and it's not, it's not the little Welsh fella. I, if I want to get that out of the way, it's not him. It's a, it's another one. But they they basically said you know it's that they all taste the same more or less. And I just thought, well, if that's your attitude, and well, yeah, I suppose you could say that about me because I could I say that about IPAs. Yeah, it's a fair point because I do say I don't say that about IPAs, but I do say, you know, if you're using American hops, they really do overpower the taste there's no subtle flavors i don't think you know they're very full-on flavors and it's hard to distinguish one from another whereas lagers are, you know i can sort of distinguish a good one from a bad one but i suppose that's just yeah that's just me just nullifying my own argument here so i'll shut up shall i but getting back to this beer this is really good i do like it lovely mouthfeel really nice organic flavors that's what they, that's what i'm getting from it And it's just so light on the tongue, light, refreshing. This is cold, it's come out of the fridge. It's February and it's fucking taters out there, but I imagine in the summer, this would be, this would go down really well. I'm really liking that. That, for me, is an absolute belter of a beer. So what is the verdict on Vihera Lager? Yeah, it's really good. Really impressed with this. I left this in my fridge for ages because I just didn't like the look of the label. And this is, again, as, as I mentioned before, this has been shallow and superficial me, but it's really good. And I'm pleasantly surprised by this. Now, the awards that it's won on the back should have been an indication that this is good. And I can see why they won the awards. It is a really nice, light Hellas or lager, whatever you want, they've called it a lager. I don't know why they've done that. Normally the Germans, especially in Bavaria, they call them either a Helles or a Pils or whatever, but they've decided to call it a Lager. German name, Lager, you know, it's, it's not normally referred to as that. That's more of a British, even though the word's German, that's more of a British term, but it's nice. I have to say, that has really impressed me. I love the, the light body on it. I love the flavors, the nice, subtle, light flavors on it. Clean taste to it. It's just an all-round good beer. I'm going to give that 
I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. No, it's not the best beer from Bavaria that I've tried, but I'll tell you what, that is not bad at all from a brewer that's, you know, I've, I've never heard of this lot before. This is the first time I'm hearing of this and I'm really impressed by them. And this lager is, it's really good. I am impressed. And I'm gonna try and hunt down some more of their beers because if, if it's as good as this, and looking on their website, looking at all the awards that they've won, they appear to, to know what they're doing. And this is another point, I quickly wanna make this point. You know, people, you know, again, I'm touching on the Reinhardt Skibot, or the purity laws. You know, as I said, that is not a guarantee of good beer. What is a guarantee of good beer? Is good ingredients, good quality ingredients, and good brewing know-how. And the Germans have both. So, if you want me to give you an analogy of that, uh, Heineken beer, or um, maybe some other bigger style brewer who who use similar ingredients, you know, hops, the same hops, the same malts, the same barley or malted barley. You know, if they use the same, the two beers would not come out the same, if you know what I mean, because there's various techniques that they use, certainly the German brewers, and they just have the know-how to make good beer. And it's it's taken seriously over there. It's not seen, it's, it's part of their heritage. And that's what I like about the Germans, it, they, and the Belgians to an extent too, and some British brewers as well, not all, sadly, but some take it seriously and they see that heritage, that beer brewing heritage as something almost spiritual like you know and you might think oh, I'm he's fucking talking crap again and not but if I said that about Scottish whiskey distillers everyone would be going oh yeah you know or French brandy distillers you know everyone going oh yeah yeah but when it comes to beer everyone just fucking laughs at British beer and it's about time they stopped but there you go rant over that's a nine out of ten that is definitely recommended. Well done, Vihera. I am going to be trying some more of your beer. That is fantastic. That is a really good one. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>